I'm glad both uh, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray could be here tonight. They're both very talented guys. Uh, Dan, of course, as Bill, I think, was one of the original members of Saturday Night Live. Went on to make hit movies like Blues Brothers, Trading Places. The latest movie is called Ghostbusters, which opens this Friday. Would you welcome, please, Dan Aykroyd. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Ah, boy, I'm incredibly nervous. <laughs> oh. uh, you look resplendent tonight, sir. Just tremendous. It and, looks uh, a little uh, a high school promish, doesn't it? Well, that's okay. You can carry it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. Uh, how you been? Uh, very good. Very good. Very excited about Ghostbusters. Are uh, you really? Yeah, absolutely. It's got lots of laughs, lots of special effects, and uh, family picture, and uh, we're very, very excited. It's going to be a good one. Okay, thank you, Dan, for being okay, with us. Now, my next guest. <laughs> got it all out of the way right now. <laughs> No, I, saw, I was reading Time earlier today, and Time magazine, which very often, for some reason, shoots down. Coca-Cola bought that one for us, yeah. Yeah. No, no, just... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they liked it. Uh, that, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. It's, it's nice for a change to be appreciated by, uh, by the press. Yeah. What do you, will you come on with a book tonight? What, uh... Uh, well, this, oh, this is... has to do... I know what this is about. This is basically... Uh, has to do with my pitch for the American Society for Psychical Research. Now, in the movie, Ghostbusters, uh, we deal with... ESP and ghosts and apparitions and all of this stuff that um, many of you out there may not believe in at all. Uh, but in fact, there is a group in New York that, uh, that treats us all very seriously, and this is their journal here. I have a picture, in fact, uh, of my grandfather. Oh, come on. Now. Here, are you, now, this are you is, putting me on? Now, take a look at this. This is, this is very, this very strange. Uh, this he, is your grandfather? Yes, he was a grandfather. He was a psychic, a medium. He corresponded with Bertrand Russell, and this picture was taken at his writing desk in, uh, in uh, Canada. And you see these heads that appear around the, uh, around mm -hmm. him. They are, they are completely, you know, inexplicable. Uh, he wouldn't have faked this because he was a very, very uh, astute man and very, very serious about this type of work. Now, and, can I show uh, the picture? Sure. One of the... Uh, now, who took the picture? The, the picture was taken by a friend of him, a, a friend of his, and... Uh, Your grandfather now is... Uh, <laughs> He, he, that is, uh, that is, uh, yeah. So Your you grandfather's see, uh, down he, below. He's the one down below, and the guy on the... Uh, on, uh, as, on to our left there. Looks like the, the Dutch Masters ad for cigars. <laughs> you sure it's not the Dutch yeah. Masters cigar ad? He had a box of cigars back of him? Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, see, I have to play devil's ad good, good on this today. Now, well, I know, I know. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, but uh, you can see that the, the, the eyes and the other characters are very, very black. And these heads yes. uh, didn't appear, uh, of course, in the original negative. Uh, and it was only after the picture was developed into a print that these... Uh, these heads came uh, came into the into the uh, the photograph. Now, Anyways, now well, I, I don't want to shoot this down, Dan, but um, isn't it possible with the photography to uh, you know gimmick something like Absolutely, this? Absolutely, but in the, the time that that was taken, which was about 1909, uh, it would have been hard to really smoothly uh, you know put other uh, superimpositions into yeah. the emulsion. Uh, one can argue, of course, that it's all fake. But these people in New York very seriously treat the psychic phenomenon, and I'll tell you how seriously they do. I'm going to read some of the titles here uh, off the uh, quarterly journal of the American Society for Psychical Research. The first article is Sensory Contamination of Free Response ESP Targets, the Greasy Fingers Hypothesis. Here's another one. Hypnagogic Fantasy, EEG, and Psi Performance in a Single Subject. Uh, they're very serious about this. Yeah, I can tell that. Uh, and uh, we have another one here. Adventures in Immortality, a look beyond the threshold of death. In any case, uh, they have a great library in New York City. They're running out of money. You might wonder why. Uh, <laughs> and they need funds to keep the library going. You're and, serious uh, about this? Well, I, I believe there's a basis in fact. I had an interesting experience in New York City when I worked on Saturday Night Live. We were on the 8th floor at NBC there. You know the studio yes. well. Yes. Um, and uh, I went into the, um, the first floor and entered the elevator with a lady. We walked into the elevator. Um, I was going to eight. She pressed eight. I pressed two. She got out on two, and I went up to the eighth floor, and I realized, hey, I pressed her floor. She pressed mine. Here we were in this confined space, and what happened was probably just a, you know, a cross circuit between, uh, you know, between our minds, and... Uh, could you just... It could have been a, a, could have been a coincidence. I, I, Couldn't I don't know. you just both have pressed the wrong floor? I mean... Well, the fact that she pressed mine and I pressed hers uh, gave me to think that maybe an ESP experience had happened there. There's a very famous book that was written about the, the ghost of Flight 401. I don't know... Uh, hey, everybody knows it, yeah. Uh, uh, the ghost of Flight 401 uh, concerned the, uh, the wreck of an Eastern Airlines L-1011. Um, they... They circled into a swamp, the autom automatic pilot went out, and Eastern Airlines salvaged all the parts from this particular wreck. Right. And uh, about two months after this wreck, um, the galley elevator went out in another L-1011. Eastern Airlines took 
the galley elevator from the wreck, put it into this other plane, and about two or three weeks after they did that, events started to happen. Stewardesses, pilots, and passengers started to see the full torso apparition of a pilot with stripes, a hat, and everything. And uh, it got so bad, it got to the point where Eastern Airlines had to issue a directive saying, hey, don't talk about this. Yeah. And eventually it got to the point where they have a blanket policy that they don't use parts from wrecks. And this is, uh, yeah. you know, documented. And if you walk up to an Eastern Airlines pilot and say, have you seen Don Repo lately? You're going to get a very strange look. Because this, this, I, won't, I won't do that. No. Uh, so this is the guy, Don Repo. Apparently he had a name and was identified by, by pilots even after death. Outside of the lady on the elevator, have you had any other... Uh, meaningful experience like that? I, mean, I had a dream uh, before my maternal grandfather died. He was a very... This is a... Uh, no, this is a paternal great-grandfather. Oh, oh, yeah. um, paternal. Had a dream uh, that uh, he was waving goodbye to me, uh, and the next day uh, got a telegram saying he was dead, and he was... Uh, there was no forewarning at all. He was healthy and died very suddenly, uh, you know, at 83 years old, and uh, uh, I figure there's something to it. I don't know. Something. I'm sure if you canvassed uh, people out there in the audience, uh, you'd find someone who's actually had a paranormal experience. Oh, yeah. and, but in Ghostbusters, folks, we're treating it all very lightly, uh, lots of laughs, and all the visual effects and everything are, are there to make you laugh. So, uh, okay. You know. We'll, uh, we'll do this, and we'll be back for another <laughs> the ghost parapsychology. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Travel with a band, huh? Boy, I'll tell you, those guys can't play at all, eh? Yeah. Talk about not being tight or anything, you know? You're a, you play drums like I do. Do you ever want to travel with a band? Uh, well, I had a little of the experience, uh, yeah. of course, with the Blues Brothers. We did take it on the road That's and right. uh, played with some fine, uh, fine... Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, Steve Cropper, Duck Dunn, and uh, everybody, but, uh, boy, we, we really enjoyed that. I, that yeah. was great. Yeah. Mm. Should we bring out your compatriot in this picture? Hey, why not? Uh, Bill, of course. <laughs> Bill had made some uh, very funny pictures. Meatballs, uh, Caddyshack, Stripes, and he's also... Co-starring in Ghostbusters. He really carries the ball in this one. We oh. engineered and structured this movie for him. He is great. He's getting the best reviews of his career. Mr. Bill Murray. Right. All right. You heard what the man said? <laughs> yeah. He, said he gave you the whole picture. True? He's a coward. He's a coward. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was a difficult uh, job because uh, Harold and Dan wrote the script, and uh, they basically said, uh... Why doesn't Bill say that? <laughs> they give you so the... they gave me all the lines, and I end up looking like a jerk, saying stuff like, Okay, guys, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> For an hour and 45 would, minutes. Would you say that well? Huh? Well, I had yeah. some practice. You know, we've n none of us have really met. I saw Dan a couple of years ago at the Oscars. I, yep. I don't think we have ever met until tonight in the hall, have we? We made eye contact once. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, well, I mean, where was that? There was a, uh, a, uh, a dinner for uh, Frank Price, a pioneer of industry yes. dinner, and you were the MC, True. and you were wickedly funny. Thank you. Really evil in person. You should see this yes. guy in person. <laughs> I couldn't believe some of, the, some of the wonderful things you were saying about some of the most horrible people in the world. <laughs> it was just fantastic. You were on the dais, like, were you not? Well, you, you say that so grandly, but uh, the dais was about 275 people. Yeah. And uh, there were about... Really, there were about a, maybe 100, maybe 150 people, and they introduced people like they were introducing the entire Rams team. Yeah. You know? And uh, it was like a running thing, and then you had to sit there. There were like three rows of people all the way across the stage eating in front of like 1,500 people. And you'd be sitting there, there was some jabber, and you'd do jokes and introduce people, and then it was eating time. Yeah. So you're sitting there eating, and you'd look, and there'd be like a whole table full of people staring Looking at, at you, you, you know, <laughs> eating. And they go, honey, look. He's using a fork on his jello. Yes. <laughs> and you always get one of these. You're just trying to yeah, do it. Yeah, it's like, like, oh, there. And they nail you. Yeah. You don't like crowds, I take it. Huh? Well, crowds are... Uh, I heard a good thing about crowds once. If you just imagine that you're way up above, like in the Empire State Building, then it doesn't bother you so much. <laughs> it sounds like... But sounds if you're like... down biting their ankles, that can be... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Somebody once said, pretend the audience is sitting there in their underwear. <laughs> well, a lot of people out I there tonight... I don't know who said that, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Put your clothes on, folks. Uh, yeah, that guy's doing time right now. Dan seems to be caught up in the... Uh... Dan's a wreck. Dan's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is very serious. Yeah, we'd be working and he'd be talking about these things and bringing out pictures of his great-grandfather mm. and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I have seen one ghost, and I've talked about this publicly, and I'll, I'll talk about No, I haven't about heard it. you talk about it. You've seen a ghost. Yeah, I saw a ghost. There's a restaurant in, that we worked uh, in, uh, in this thing on in New York called the Tavern on the Green. Sure. 
and there is a ghost there, and it's, he's a guy, he's a waiter. And he comes up, and he goes through the whole thing, plays it perfectly straight, says, you know, tells you what the special is, and then takes your order, and then he disappears. You never... <laughs> I know that. That's it. Yes. That's the ghost of Raul. Yeah, I had him last week. Do we have a film clip of what these guys are doing in this picture? I guess we do. Um, we better, or we're going to have to read a lot from this. Yeah, I can't go. I can't. Try one of those. I love, you, I love your great granddad, Dan, but uh, uh, does this need, a, as they say, a setup? Yeah, or, this needs a setup. Uh, I guess I have to do this again, yeah. huh? Okay. Uh, you can split it either way you want. You, you well, this work. is... Uh, what clip is it? It's the... Uh, oh, yeah. This will show you how seriously we take all this ghost right. stuff. This is... Uh, the Ghostbusters, uh, Dan and Harold Ramis and myself, play uh, parapsychologists who are thrown out of a university and go into business for ourselves, capturing ghosts. And Dan and Harold design this highly sophisticated equipment. But uh, there's no real market because not many people are willing to admit that they have ghosts, right. but we do get a call finally, and we go to a hotel in New York, And uh, but we've never really used any of this equipment before. We don't quite uh, know what it's going to do. So this is do. the first shot of So this is really the first time... Uh, okay, here's it. a clip from the Ghostbusters. That's a short clip. That's it? Is it only 10 seconds? That's all you're going to give us, huh? No. You guys, come on with a 10 second. You kid, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> all right, all right, lighten up. <laughs> hey, lighten up. You know, clip, hey, what? Pay five bucks and see the movie. Right. Come on. This is for free, for nothing. Here. That's right, it's nothing. What is, what is I this? got a real nice picture of Dan. This is that's a fan sweet. club photo. Let me hold which that. She's going to be here. sending out to all the young girls. That's, this very, is, that's uh, a sweet. That's a sweet picture, Dan. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is that? I'll tell you what that was. Um, Please do. Yeah. I wish it, <laughs> it bears some explanation. Uh, yeah. The fact of the matter is, in making these movies, we had a lot of mechanical effects on stage there, and uh, they use air cannons, pressurized tanks of air at 200 pounds per square inch to uh, get reactions out of us, and that, that was me being hit in the face with an air cannon. Yeah. And I bought one of those air cannons and took it home just for personal thrills. <laughs> Lonely Friday nights can be... Uh, <laughs> what is it, Fred? Fred is pointing. Money, money, money. Fred is one of the great pointers in our business. Uh, we'll do this. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. Where's my...